Hello, I'm Alex Morton. I'd like to welcome you to this live broadcast. And tonight's message is reconciliation throughout our nation, the key to revival. And I believe having revival, if we want to have revival in this nation and throughout the world, we need reconciliation and repentance first. That's always going to come before we have revival. And we need to get right with one another before we can get right with God. Because when we go to get right with God, when we go to bring a gift to the altar, uh, we know that we also must get right with our brother first. We know that that is from the scriptures. And I want to start off by reading James 5.16. That's going to start us off tonight. That's the first scripture we're going to read. So let's read James 5.16 together. It says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. Who are the righteous? The righteous are those who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So us as Christians have been cleansed. Now we need to point others to Christ that they may be cleansed as well. But we also we need to get right with one another. That's the key here, getting right with one another. And there's so many divisions, not only in the world, but among Christians, among b different backgrounds, different races. And, and for the record, there's one race, the human race, except we've got it all mixed up in the church. You know, you've got churches that are, that are Caucasian. You've got churches that are African-American. You have churches that are Latino. But a lot of times they won't mix together. There's a big problem with that. If we get right with one another and begin to heal those wounds, then we can see revival on a greater scale, on a scale that we've never seen in this nation. I truly believe that. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are going to give me your words tonight, Lord. I speak that by faith, Lord, because you always give me the words that I need to speak by your Spirit. May I not speak my words, but your, but your words, Lord. May I not speak my own words, but yours, Lord. Jesus, touch hearts tonight. Holy Spirit, touch hearts tonight. As we, speaking, uh, as we speak about healing wounds, as I speak about healing the wounds of those who have deep pain, Lord, deep pain. Um, deep traumas even, Father God, in their hearts and their minds and their spirits, Lord. Because of things that have been done to them, said to them, they've been mocked, they've been ridiculed, Lord. And they've been in this place for many years, uh, many months, many years, or even decades, because they feel offended by a certain people group. And there are many that need to identify with a certain people group that they may ask for forgiveness. So Lord, move on hearts that we may ask for forgiveness when we are led, and we may also forgive quickly. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. So I truly believe that this message is huge tonight. Okay, I told my wife before I preached that this is probably the most important message of my lifetime. Because I believe we're on the brink of a great awakening. A great awakening that will set the tone and set the stage for revival, not only in our nation, but throughout the world. And look, I've preached a lot of messages. I've uh, had a lot of revelations from God. But I believe we're living in a time where we need to make the decision to get right with one another and stop the petty bickering, stop holding on to things that happened years ago, decades ago, centuries ago, generations and generations ago, and it's time to get right among one another. So if we as a nation can be reconciled to one another, we could be an example to all nations, and this could set the stage for a great awakening, as I just said. I truly believe that so many backgrounds and ethnicities being brought together in one nation was part of God's plan. Have you ever asked yourself, how did all these different people groups get into one nation and mix together? I know that's happening in other nations, but not like it does here, not like it has here in America. All these different backgrounds that have come together have come together for a purpose because what the enemy has meant for harm, God works it for his good. And I believe that all of us being grouped together here in America, no matter the background or ethnicity, that we can become as one. And when all the world sees us loving on one another, forgiving one another, asking for forgiveness of one another, 
it will spread like wildfire and it will open our hearts to receive from God and that revival may rain down, that God will come down and bring all that he is with him. So before we can heal as a nation, we need to confront and address some of the horrific things that took place in America's past. Our land has been stained with innocent blood. European settlers killed 56 million indigenous people over about 100 years in America. Many times Native Americans were promised peace but were deceived and slaughtered. Deceived and slaughtered. The most disturbing part was that these things were sometimes done by so-called Christians. It's time to reveal to the world what a Christian really is and that means loving people with the supernatural love of Jesus. The love of Jesus is what captivates us and transforms a darkened heart into a sensitive and responsive one. I recently saw a testimony from a man who was the owner of a satanic church. I believe this church was in South Africa. He was a complete atheist before having Jesus appear to him, but it all started with a Christian. It all started with a Christian. A Christian woman interviewed him while he was still a Satanist and asked him, asked him if he believed in Jesus and he told her no. And at that moment, he didn't believe in Jesus. After telling her no, she gave him a big hug and just held him. Just held him. He, uh, this Christian woman didn't respond as many other Christians do in judgment. In, in, you know, just walking away and say, whatever, I'm not going to talk to you then. No, this woman embraced this man. She hugged this man and held this man. And he, with tears in his eyes, testified, I've never known such love. I've never known a love like that. I've never experienced such a thing. And the way she held me, I've never had someone hold me like that. And from that day forward, he knew Jesus was real. And this is what the world is waiting for. Not a new gift of the Spirit, but instead Christ's unconditional love being expressed through us, Jesus' followers. Without love, all the gifts cease to operate, cease to operate anyway, don't they? Without love, all those tongues and prophecies and all those gifts that begin to manifest and flow out of us cease. We need to love on people. We need to love, especially on those who are lost, because they're looking for love. Love is like a light that shines in darkness, and Jesus is that light. In him is the greatest love we could possibly imagine, and it was displayed at the cross when he laid down his life for all mankind and as we speak about loving on people I have to say I love my african-american brothers and sisters the wounds are deep for so many of them in this nation because of prejudices oppressive mindsets and the suffering of the generations before them slavery began in this nation in the year of 1619 roughly and ended in 1865 and although slavery ended, segregation didn't. I couldn't begin to imagine what these previous generations went through. They were treated like animals. Violence erupted many times. And people were killed because of their color. These people were killed because they were African American for no reason and wrongly accused many times. More times than we could count. Now my question to those who hear this message is, will you be part of the solution? Will you be part of a people who choose unity over discord and love over hate? Now please turn with me to Jeremiah 32, verses 39 and 40. Jeremiah 32, chapter 32, verses 39 and 40. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Simbo kotaramba. Jesus, Jesus, come, Lord, come. Jeremiah 32, verses 39 and 40. Then I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever, that the good of them, or for the good of them and their children after them, 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. So these scriptures were speaking of the time when God would gather the Israelites out of all the countries where they were driven. And I believe the scripture speaks prophetically about America in this hour. Not to say I'm reinterpreting the text. I only believe the scripture can be applied to our nation. I believe the Lord wants us to pray and think about those we've wronged. God really wants us to think on that, that in this season. He's always wanted us to think on it and to pray on it, but especially now, because we're on the brink of revival. It's time to humble ourselves and confess our sins and the sins of our ancestors in an attempt to reconcile the different people groups all across America. It's time for empathy, compassion, and mercy to flow from our hearts. There are many who will say, why should I have to apologize for something my ancestors did? I never took part in the sins that they committed. It's a new generation. And now let me confess something. I once felt the same way too, but if we are to become one nation under God, this is the way we're going to get there. By confessing, by apologizing even for what our ancestors did in an attempt to reconcile these people groups together out of love, out of compassion, out of mercy for one another and what our forefathers have suffered. So a Christian's response shouldn't, should always be restorative and saying, look, I had nothing to do with that. Get over it is not the way that's going to happen. It's not the way that things are going to be restored and healed in this nation. As Christians, we are the ones who must lead this lost and dying world toward the light of Christ. We should be the first to confess our sins, the first to apologize, and the first to forgive. So this is how we will bridge the gap between people groups that have divided themselves from one another. This is how we bridge that gap. This is how we break down the walls of division. God longs to break down denominational walls and prejudices. It's time to embrace one another regardless of our differences. Acts 3.19 says this, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. I want to read that again. Acts 3.19 Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. When the body of Christ reconciles from within, the immediate result will be revival. Because reconciliation is the good soil necessary for the seeds of revival. And that's a, a word God gave me. So I'm going to read that one more time. Because reconciliation, reconciliation is the good soil necessary for the seeds of revival. Without reconciliation, the hearts are cold, callous, and hardened. And they will not receive those seeds that God is releasing in this moment, in this time. There are far too many groups that I could speak of in this message, in this message tonight, that have been wronged. From the foreigner that has come to live among us, but has been mocked and ridiculed because of their accent and their cultural dif differences, to the woman who's been a victim of incest, rape, or molestation, if you can identify corporately with any group that has wronged someone in any of these categories I've named tonight, or in a category I haven't named, I would challenge you to write a list of those things or those persons that you can identify with. That's the first thing I would have you do is make that list. Next, I would suggest confessing those sins to God and to another person that you trust. And finally, as you are led, when you come across someone who you feel deserves an apology, your apology, an acknowledgement of the wrongs committed, you should apologize to them and let them know how much you care about them, love on them.
And I'm not saying you have to apologize to every single person uh, that that you can identify with wronging or or your ancest your ancestors may have wronged. I'm not saying every single person, but as the Holy Spirit leads you and gives you the moment of opportunity and says, you know, it's time that you say something, that you speak up because this person needs healing, then do it. Submit yourself to the Holy Spirit and He will lead you in these things. By identifying with the person or persons that have sinned against them, you help them to begin their healing process. So, I want to recommend a, a book to you called Healing America's Wounds by John Dawson. And I'm going to show you the book Healing America's Wounds by John Dawson. And I'm not in the habit of promoting any book. But this book, if you're a pastor, you need this book. If you're a follower of Christ, you need this book. And if you're not a follower of Christ, you may become one by reading this book. Because this book has opened my eyes in so many different ways. And most importantly, I've received revelation into what the key to revival truly is. And it's reconciliation among one another. So I want to read a couple of examples of identificational repentance from this book before I close. And you may say, what is identificational repentance? It's, it's just that identifying with different people, groups, organizations, or what have you, uh, that have sinned or offended others, other people or other people groups. So now let, I'm going to turn to this book and I'm going to show you um, a couple of confessions that... Uh, that were given by different people in this book. I'm going to give you two separate instances here. I'm going to turn to page 29 of this book. And if I tear up while I'm reading these confessions, it's because God has touched my heart. And He has given me compassion and love for these people who have been offended. You know, and I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you come from. If you cross my path, I'm going to show you love. And it's not because of me. I don't know how to love anyone. When I came to Christ, I didn't know how to love anyone. But Jesus taught me what love was. He showed me. Not only by the Word of God, but by His Spirit. By encountering Him. So if you need more love, let me tell you this. I don't really know how to love. But Jesus can teach you how to love. He taught me how to love. He can teach you how to love. Ask Him. May that be your prayer. God, help me to love like you love. Help me to love like you love me. Help me to see me through your eyes, Lord. Because when you love who God made you, it's easier to love others as well. So I'm going to read the, uh, from page 29 here. And this is where a police officer confesses the sins of the police department in the city which is Bakersfield, California. He says here, Lord, I want to represent my vocation, he prayed. We, as the city police department, have historically been such an instrument of rejection and injustice in our dealings with the black community. We have caused such wounding, such sorrow. Please forgive me. Please forgive us. And then to the black pastors, I want to humble myself as a part of the police department. You have endured so much, and as a police officer who is a fellow believer, I want to ask for your forgiveness. We forgive you came the gracious chorus of voices from all sides. Tears were flowing now. The sense of God's presence was palpable. It was such a simple thing to do to say, yet foundation stones were moving in the heavenlies. It was so easy to do, yet God was shifting the atmosphere. The book says you could feel it. Since that day, the author says, I have seen and heard such things countless times. Pagan Americans are hopelessly trapped in old patterns of fear and distrust. But God's people are experiencing a season of grace for repentance and healing. This comes in the form of godly sorrow. And if you want to read the scripture that he's referencing here, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Now I'd like to read one more confession from this book, which is on page 246, 246 if you purchase this book.
So this confession is from the author, um, and it's directed toward all women. All men can identify with this confession, and I would also say, ladies, please forgive me as well. Forgive us as men for some of the terrible things that have been done to you. And now let's read that confession. Dear, dear female reader, I may not be the guy that hurts you, but I look upon your hurt with shame and embarrassment nonetheless. There have been times when I have had to ask forgiveness of mother, wife, sister, and female associate. One woman in particular, I would beg for forgiveness if I knew how to contact her. I am no stranger to masculine pride and male appetites. Maybe I haven't committed rape or some other loathsome offense, but it is really just a matter of degree. Some of you were molested by your father, the, un the ultimate parental betrayal. Some of you experienced other forms of incest, and you haven't felt whole since. Most of you know what it's like to be the plaything of a teenage boy, emotionally, if not physically. And nearly all of you carry some wound of rejection from a broken teen relationship or a troubled marriage. You know what it's like to be ogled like a side of meat by someone of greater strength to be, to be condescended to and joked about in the presence of men. You also know what it is like to be treated tenderly but not taken seriously, your gifts spurned and your advice unheeded. Please forgive me, forgive us. You were never meant to experience these things. They represent a gross distortion of the character of the part of the character of God that was to be revealed to you through the brother, father, husband, and male friend. These things broke God's heart along with yours. You were supposed to be adored by a loving father who praised your accomplishments and cherished the beauty of your uniqueness. You were supposed to feel unconditionally loved and completely safe in the company of male friends and relatives. When I have confessed these things, the author says, in a public gathering, I have seen such longing in the eyes of Christian men. I look around, collecting permission to speak from the eyes of my brothers. Sometimes they even shout, yes, say it. That's right, we are sorry. Please forgive us. So I sense now that those who are watching or who will watch later, feel that they need to confess to God some things. They need to get right with God. They need to get right. We need to get right with God. We need to get right with one another. So let's pray and ask God for forgiveness in any way that we have offended Him. And let's ask God for the strength to confess to those who we have offended. Now let's pray. Father God, Lord, any people group, any organization, any background that we can identify with, Lord, that has sinned against others, or that has offended others, that has done terrible things, brutalized and, and mistreated others, God, forgive us. Forgive us for, for these things, God. Forgive us for any sins we've committed and also give us the strength to identify with these people groups, with these groups, these organizations and such, Lord. Give us the strength, give us the courage to confront these people as your Spirit leads us to apologize and to ask for forgiveness. Lord, also give us hearts that we would forgive quickly. Lord, that when someone offends us, that when someone ridicules us, someone mocks us, someone persecutes us, someone does terrible things to us, God, we can forgive them. Just let the Holy Spirit speak to you now. And as you can think of people groups you can identify with, whether it be your race, whether it be, you know, and, and for the record, we're all one race, the human race, but when I speak about race, I'm speaking about the nations, the ancestors, the national, uh, uh, national heritage, national background that you have, the people groups you've come from, the nations you've come from. Your ancestors have come from, if you can identify with a certain people group that has oppressed people, that has, that has wronged people, Lord, lead us. Lead us into that, Lord. We ask, you know, I'm speaking to you out there right now, but I'm also speaking to the Lord. And as the Lord leads you, write down a list of those 
groups, those nationalities, those organizations that you identify with, that God can deal with you more on those subjects, that there can be true healing, reconciliation, restoration, and transformation that take place. And you know, I've touched on uh, many different things tonight, and Lord, we just thank you for leading us tonight, Lord. We just thank you for your Holy Spirit moving on us tonight. Lord, continue to move on us throughout the rest of this evening. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. But I just want to say to you, continue to, to allow the, the Lord uh, and His Holy Spirit to move on you tonight, leading you into what it is He wants you to do with this information, what it is He wants you to do as you go forward asking for forgiveness and quickly forgiving others. I believe God is softening hearts right now. He's dealing with you on things that you've done in the past. And I want to say to you, if you are a follower of Christ and the blood of Jesus has cleansed you, there's no condemnation in Christ, but God may have you reach out to some people that you have offended. And I've touched on uh, speaking about Native Americans, African Americans, people that come from different nations with accents, with different cultures, okay? If you can identify with, with mocking those people, if you can identify with being an American, okay? Americans have mocked people, have oppressed people, have belittled people like that. And we are, as Christians, to be the first one to step out and say, I'm so sorry you've been treated like that. You shouldn't have had to endure these things. And that's where we can start. But when we have reconciliation in this nation, we can have great revival. I thank you so much for joining me tonight. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your weekend.